Good morning. Um, we're in Halifax today, and the first thing we want to go and check out is the farmer's market. Yep, hopefully find some fresh vegetables and replenish our food stock, which, which would be good. We haven't uh, done shopping in a while. Yeah. It's very noisy right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty cool market actually. Um, it's the longest continuously running market in North America since 1750. So it should be pretty cool. Let's go check it out. Let's go. Welcome back. Done with the Cabot Trail, we headed for Halifax, Nova Scotia's vibrant and busy capital. This little harbor market was a great way to start the day off. With fresh vegetables and fresh fish in hand, we take our leave. All right, what you got there? So right here, I have a East Coast delicacy, um, what is named the Donaire. Uh, harvested from the wild Donaire of Southern Nova Scotia. They combine it with Donaire sauce, which is an excrement from the Donaire animal. And apparently it's really delicious. All that was fake, but it is an East Coast food. Try it. Yeah, it's good. Tastes like Donaire? Yeah. <laughs> right, cheers, that's mine. First up is the Halifax Citadel, a star-shaped battle fortress from 1749, designed to protect the city from any and all invaders. That startled me. Oh my goodness, me too. <laughs> so that means it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> oh. So, sweetie, <laughs> every day at 12 o'clock, when you go to the Citadel, they shoot off the cannons. We thought we had a little bit more time, but... <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Me neither. So, uh, yeah, go visit the Citadel at 12. <laughs> I recommend visiting at any time of day. If you're a history buff like myself, you won't regret it. There are even tour buses that will take you up the hill, so you don't have to walk up like we did. We have to wait for the changing of the guard before we can enter the citadel. It's military tradition, even to this day. I am remembered of my own military service, as I did similar jobs in my time with the Royal Canadian Dragoons. Citadel. I often complain how old the buildings were that we worked out of, but they're not this old. This is a whole nother level. Yeah. I would say let's start at the beginning. Um, the beginning, um, in the year two or no, the year zero where Jesus was born. <laughs> You just do not look a skirwish. Is that the same uniform like you used to have? I actually don't. <laughs> Cozy. The only thing about being in the military that has changed is the level of technology used. Such old equipment, but it feels so familiar. Drill practice. Not every soldier's favorite part of the military, but when done correctly, 
can make any team look like a well-oiled machine. From up here, it's easy to see why they chose this spot as Halifax's main defense. With the Citadel behind us, we start to explore the vibrant downtown and boardwalk area of this colorful city. Lindsay has never been here before, and I haven't been here in over 10 years, so neither of us really had much idea what to expect. From cannons to amphibian craft, this was well worth the stop, for sure. Exceptional artwork all around. Halifax really put in the effort here. And they're gorgeous murals. And there is another one over there. Like a kid who can't stop touching everything, I really didn't have a choice but to try out this medieval device. And now I put the pins in and go on, go on you are. I'm stuck. No, don't you dare. <laughs> Bagpipes are just as prevalent as the artwork. Nova Scotia directly translates to New Scotland, so it's no surprise. Right? Looks melted. Hey, it looks like they had a hot summer. It's a cold mist here. Would we actually be in a sunny, coastal city if we didn't have ice cream? Thank you. Yes, we would, but we wouldn't have ice cream. Ready. So what's the point? They got hammocks on the boardwalk. Just too bad that they're taken. <laughs> Lindsay and I spent two days in Halifax. We could have spent more, but it's a big world and there's lots to see. Halifax exceeded all of our expectations, but it's hard to have any when you have little knowledge of what you're getting into, which I think is a nice way to travel. Lindsay and I usually venture down the path less traveled, so exploring cities isn't our number one priority, but we do enjoy it. It's a furthest sun. Our time in Halifax is up, but as long as we hold on to our memories, it'll always be with us. It's a sharpest cry, the hit goes better why. Before we leave Halifax, however, there are two spots we want to visit to pay our respects to. First is the monument to the people killed in the Halifax explosion of 1917. It was December 6, and a French cargo ship full of munitions called the SS Mont Blanc collided with the Norwegian vessel, the SS Emo. Chaos ensued as over 1,700 people were killed, and the city was almost completely leveled. This was the largest man-made explosion to date, unfortunately for the citizens of Halifax.
And lastly, we visited the gravesite of some of the victims of the sinking of the Titanic, one of Maritime's most deadly and infamous disasters of all time. One hundred twenty-one souls were laid to rest here in this site, mostly because they were either unidentifiable or it was too much work to move them any further. Hey, Lindsay, did you know that we're sleeping next to a graveyard? Yeah, I did. Oh, so that's why it was dead quiet around here. Moving on from Halifax the next day, we find ourselves driving along the coast to another well-known spot. With sun in the sky and the smell of the ocean on the cusp of our noses, we feel re-energized after the hustle and bustle of the big city. Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia's maritime playground, welcomes us. Hi everyone. Hello. We're currently in Peggy's Cove, which is about a half an hour from uh, Halifax. It's a beautiful fisher town. Yeah, stunning little place. It's gorgeous. Just have a look around. Super cute. Yeah. Little fishing town. Oh yeah. Not that much to do here, but still pretty. It's nice. It's, it's worth seeing if you're in the area <laughs> for sure. Yeah, definitely stop here. And the drive was perfect. Oh, place. beautiful drive. <laughs> Founded over 200 years ago in 1811. The town relied mainly on fishing to survive until after World War II, after which tourism took over. We then spotted something that was new to me, but Lindsay knew exactly what it was. An Alphorn. This rare to Canada instrument is usually used by mountain dwellers of the Swiss Alps. You never know what you'll see traveling. In the end, there isn't much to see in this small community, but with its purposely rustic and underdeveloped appearance, Peggy's Cove has a charm that not a lot of places can compete with. no longer a hidden gem for us, we start to move on. It's on a home day. On a pumpkin. It's on a pumpkin, people. It's so cool. Nova Scotia really keeps up the quality. We are constantly bombarded with gorgeous seaside towns. Mahone Bay is no exception. But it's been a long day, so we take an hour and check out the town, but then we change our journey into camp finding mode. We get word that there is a private beach nearby that the owner lets people stay there, so we can't let this opportunity pass us by. Our spot for the night. Cool. 
We keep telling ourselves that when we eventually settle down, it will be next to the water. And that's really the only stipulation we have, for obvious reasons. Definitely for the sunsets, the vibes, the fishing, and of course, so Lindsay can go polar dipping when the water is near freezing. But I'll let her do that on her own. While traveling, not every night we get the chance to make dinner on the beach. So we take this rare opportunity to combine our two favorite things, eating and being near the water. Nova Scotia was a great host. We didn't know what to expect here. We're glad we started this trip seeing a bit of Canada because it's gonna be a long time until we come back. Next, we head south.